This episode is brought to you by Michigan Economic Development Corporation. In Michigan, you can have both a rewarding career and a quality lifestyle with plentiful career opportunities in world-changing, innovating industries, from electric vehicles to clean energy to biotech, with room for advancement no matter where you are in your career. Plus, Michigan offers a welcoming, beautiful, affordable, and inclusive community for all. Live your best life. You can in Michigan. Visit themichiganlife.org. Monarch Legacy of Monsters, an Apple original series. The world is on fire. I decided to do something about it. On November 17th. This place, it's not ours. Believe me. The most massive event of the year arrives. And if you come with me, you'll know everything, I promise. Oh my God, go, go, go! Monarch Legacy of Monsters, streaming November 17th, only on Apple TV+. Hey, I'm Jamie Glowacki, and you're listening to Oh Crap, I Love My Toddler, But Holy Fuck. This is a podcast for conscious parents who drop the F-bomb a lot. Okay, welcome, welcome. Today, we're going to talk about connection. If I had to boil down all my work with families, it would come down to one word, and that is connection. It's really the basis of all parenting for me because you can avoid so much hassle with your little ones and your big ones, actually. Connection follows through parenting till your children are grown. The funny thing about connection is I I always use it. And it wasn't until I wrote, you know, I was in the middle of writing the new book that my editors were like, well, you have to define connection. I was like, define connection? Like everybody knows what connection is. And I realized maybe people don't. And then I actually started to think through my work and I was like, right, a lot of people misunderstand what connection is. And oftentimes I will say to a family I'm working with, you know, we need to work on your connection. And the first thing out of the parent's mouth are, I'm with him every day. I'm a stay-at-home mom and I'm with him every day. I'm totally connected to him. Being with somebody is not connection, right? Being in physical proximity is not connection. And in fact, you can be wildly connected to somebody who's not even in the same room as you. So I really had to kind of step back and think, okay, what does connection mean? And to me, it's the energetic flow between two people. It's really seeing the person in front of you and accepting them as they are. And it's, it's, it can be a very fleeting thing too, right? With our kids, that means you're not being a mistake monitor. It's not those teaching moments, which can be wonderful, but it's not a teaching moment. It's not them actually physically being on you, right? You, your kid can be clinging to you and you can be very disconnected. It's not the stuff we do for them every single day. So we sometimes feel connected on our end because once you have a child, every single thing you do is dictated by that child. And I don't mean that in in a, a little dictator kind of way. You wake up in the morning thinking about your kid, thinking about breakfast, thinking about what you have to do. Literally everything we do revolves around the children in some way, shape, or form. Even if you're taking some time for self-care, you are literally carving that time out away from your child. You might need child care, right? So so we often think we're connected to our kids because we do so much for them and they really are a hundred percent on the forefront of our brain, even if it's thinking not bad, not good thoughts about them, right? Even if we're like oh, super aggravated, they're still on the forefront of our brain. Connection has everything to do with what I call their emotional gas tank. And I think this notion of gas tank is pretty uh, mainstream at this point in time. Oftentimes we call it their emotional bucket. And we all have an emotional bucket that gets empty and full, right? And even as an adult, you might go out with your friends and come home and just be like, oh, my bucket is so full. I got to spend this like amazing time with my friends. You might have a lovely night with your spouse and feel like super connected and you feel like that emotional gas tank is super full, right? So I think... I. I think it's a pretty well-known term. Kids have these emotional buckets. And the trick is they have small emotional gas tanks, right? They're, they're like mini coopers. They're tiny. And so their, their gas tanks are pretty small. So they fill very quickly and they also empty very quickly. 
Here's the thing, you guys, when their bucket's empty is usually when you see all hell break loose. It's, um, I, I like to call it niggly behavior, right? It's this behavior that is pokey, prodty, <laughs> whiny. I can't do my shoes. I can't, I can't, I can't. If you ask your child to do a small chore and they have a fallout crazy meltdown, that's a really good indicator that their bucket is empty. <laughs> There is an African proverb that I love, and it is a child who is not embraced by the village will burn it down to feel its warmth. And it's a proverb. And I actually, I saw the first time I saw it, it was in conjunction with a school shooting. But I think it can be parlayed into not such a dramatic circumstance and into our daily life. A child who is not embraced by the village, meaning if they don't feel connected, right? Like, and of course, I'm sure anybody listening to me right now is an excellent parent. You're listening to a parenting podcast. You're in the upper echelon of parenting just by being here, yeah? But feeling the warmth of your particular tribe, of your particular family is so important. And that's connected. When your child feels connected, they will automatically be more helpful. Because check it out, once you're part of a tribe and at this age, well, I guess any age really, that one of the basic human needs is feeling like you belong. So when you feel like you're part of something and you're part of this bigger thing, right? Then you're not so apt to, to get kicked out of it. You're apt, you're not so apt to do behavior that will get you kicked out of that tribe. You want to be part of it. And, and I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. The thing when you are connected with your child is you feel like an excellent parent. You're like, yeah, man, I'm on my game. Me and my kid are, are like super connected. And when all of you are connected, your spouse and, 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 and other children, it's these stellar moments, right? Those are the moments you put on Facebook. Those are the moments you put on Instagram because you're like, yes, I I got this. <laughs> so I love that proverb because burn down the village can be those epic meltdowns. That can be your asshole behavior. That can be your like, I'm going to make you pay attention, right? And that's where some of this acting out comes from. Now, one of the things is, we, of course, we can't be locked into our kids all day, every day. We can't be locked in emotionally. So I use that term a lot, locked in, meaning these moments where you feel this intense connectivity, you feel this great energetic flow, you and your kid are on the same page. You can't do that every day. And I would venture to say that, you know, in my years of social work, I worked with, of course, moms who were totally disconnected because of trauma, that like couldn't connect at all to their kids. And now, of course, I work with probably, I would venture to say, I would call us all over-parenters, right? We're the, we're the over-parenters, the overthinkers. And what happens is that most parents I work with actually try to be too connected. They, they really think they have to be present 100% of the time. You can't, you guys, you're going to burn out. And the problem with burnout is that it starts this bad cycle. You're going to automatically be super disconnected because you're going to go to these extremes. I would like to eliminate all these pendulum extreme swings, right? So number one is don't even think you have to be connected to your kid. One of the tricks I think is, and and I have worked, every family I've worked with, I've had this feeling and I've actually like done a poll in my own community because when I first realized I was having this feeling, I said, oh my God, I can't be the only one. Then I started again asking the families I worked with, you ever have this feeling that you're running from your kids? It's almost like this, oh my God, don't make eye contact. They'll, they'll drag me under, right? So we might be going about our chores in the house. We might be doing all the things we need to do in our daily life, but it's like we're almost avoiding that connection because sometimes when we connect with our kids in that way, they will suck us dry. It's really hard to extricate ourselves. It's really hard to end the connection so we can move on because this sort of connection, it, it's a pause in daily life, right? For the most part. I mean, you might be able to connect while you're washing dishes, while you're doing, you know, your chores around the house. But for the most part, it's it's a pause in daily life. And what happens is we emotionally run from our kids because it feels like they'll drag us under. That, my friends, is called connection scarcity. So when you get that feeling, like, I just need five minutes to myself, and you're sort of 
And it, it can be a physical thing. You can be kind of going through the house, avoiding eye contact, <laughs> or it can be like, I'm just going to phone this in. I'm going to read this book, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do the voices or I'm not going to sink into it. Right. So that leads to connection scarcity and connection scarcity is going to make your child 100% needy. It's this really weird paradox, right? You're just going to, they're going to really be on you like white on rice. So if you're fearing this lock in because they'll drain you, again, you're in connection scarcity. And I hear this all the time, right? I give him attention and it's never enough. So if you have that feeling like I give my kid plenty of attention and it's just never enough, I can almost guarantee your child's in connection scarcity. So remember, our little ones are especially two, three, four-year-olds. They don't have a concept of time. And they love this connection, right? No, mommy, stay. Mommy, stay. Stay on the couch. No, mommy, stay in bed with me. Snuggle me more, right? They love that. It feels really good. It feels good to you. It feels good to them. But you have to get out of bed. You have to get off the couch. You have to stop the snuggling because dinner needs to be made, right? So if you're feeling like, oh, it's never enough, we need more connection. And the t- the big trick with this is, like I said about their emotional gas tanks, they fill really quickly. They empty really quickly. So if you're in connection scarcity, we're going to have to find more connecting points throughout the day. It's going to have to be more often. So your child doesn't feel like it, they're never going to get it. So if they're being needy about your connection time... It means that they're fearing it's not going to happen, which means they're not feeling it enough. So this is, we're going to get to actual connection activities in one second, right? But um, what I need to talk about first is uh uh-huh parenting and the idea that everything I'm talking about today, a lot of what I'm talking about in general, both in this podcast, in my work, in my new book, is a practice. So parenting is not perfection. It's a practice, just like yoga, right? We go to yoga class and the teacher constantly reminds us it's a practice. It's a practice. It's a practice. It's not perfection out of the gates. So I encourage you to look at that. We feel this intense need to be on our parenting and be perfect all the time. But bear in mind, you guys, it's a, it's a practice and you're going to fuck it up. Your kid's going to fuck it up and that's okay. Just take that information. Be like, okay, now I know better. What can I do better? Okay. And, and connection and every all the connection activities I'm going to talk about and how we get disconnected definitely is a practice because we slip back, we have our own faults, we get tired, we get drained, we can't do everything perfectly. So go easy on yourself and remind yourself, please, that this is a practice. So before we talk about connection activities, we have to talk about how we get disconnected, right? And again, disconnected can just be the minutia of daily living. You have you have stuff to do throughout the day. You can't be locked in all the time. But there is also what I call uh-huh parenting. So f- check it out. If you find yourself during the day, uh-huh, uh-huh, your little one's like jabbering at you and you're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, good job. Good job is disconnected parenting. Good job. Good job. Oh, what a good job. Ah, nah. If you were really connected, you would find something more interesting to say. I'm wildly opposed to that term. (laughs) There's so many other things you can say besides good job, but usually good job, especially said in that voice. Oh, good job. I didn't really watch you jump off the slide. I really didn't. Good job. (laughs) And once once you realize it in yourself, you're going to catch yourself all day long how often you say it. So that's uh uh-huh parenting, right? Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's disconnecting or it's just a sign that we are disconnected where where our mind is somewhere else, right? So that's a good, that's a good gauge too, is when you feel like your mind is somewhere else, not really on what the child is doing or what the child is asking of you. We get disconnected again by the tasks we do every day. We, it, it's a tricky thing because we feel like we're doing it for the child, but that's not connected to the person, right? It's just the tasks we're doing. And we have to talk about it. It's our phones. Our phones are wildly disconnecting. And I am the last living person, I think, who thinks technology is not killing us. I am pro-technology, even for kids. I think it, it, the technology is here to stay. It benefits us in so many ways. But of course, our phones with our children are disconnecting. 
I'm not going to take away your phone use. You guys, we're going to talk about when we get to connection activities, we're going to talk about how to manage it better so that it's not disconnecting for you and your child's relationship, but you get your phone, you get your social media. I'm not going to take that away from you. I'm not going to guilt you for using it. I understand it is in, in some senses, the phone is wildly connecting because we get to stay really present with our own personal village, right? Our friends, our mom friends, our parents, anybody who you can text about like, holy shit, my kid's poop is green. What just happened? That can be very connecting, right? But it's also, we know the automatic reflex to go to our phone. Once you are on your phone, you are disconnected, absolutely 100% disconnected. So it's good to bear that in mind. And we've all had this experience. You're sitting at dinner with your friend who's texting somebody else. Of course, that person's not present with you. They're half in with you and they're half in with the person they're texting. And I don't care. You can say it's an emergency. It's my spouse. It's this, it's that, it's the other thing. It doesn't matter. The cold, hard fact is that it's disconnecting, right? Your attention is now split. So again, we'll talk about how to manage that. I'm not going to take it away from you. <laughs> Monarch Legacy of Monsters, an Apple original series. The world is on fire. I decided to do something about it. On November 17th. This place, it's not ours. Believe me. The most massive event of the year arrives. If you come with me, you'll know everything, I promise. Oh my God, go, go, go! Monarch Legacy of Monsters, streaming November 17th, only on Apple TV+. Plus. All right, so let's talk about some connection activities, right? Because when, when you're out of practice with this, as you get better at it, there's a flow. You will know, you will effortlessly have connection with your child. But when you need to start practicing it, you have to have these concrete things and use a timer, you guys, because again, your child needs short bursts, but they're going to need it more often. So don't be afraid to use this. Don't expect to be good at it. Use it as a practice, use a timer. So really any activity you're going to do with your child can be a connecting activity. Watching a movie can be connecting. If you are sitting next to your child and you're watching the movie together and afterwards you're going to sing the songs or you're going to pause the movie and be like, oh, I wonder how that character feels right now. Somebody just hurt her feelings. You know, you can actually use digital things as a connection. You can use Digit, you know, iPad use, video games can be connecting as long as you're engaged, right? It's an engagement with the child. Anything your child loves to do. So classics, of course, are, you know, building with blocks, playing house, playing kitchen, um, playing any sort of game with your child, Play-Doh. These are all connecting. So when your child asks you to do something, you can do it. The biggest trick with connection activities is that you get bored and tune out. So as long as you're in a connection activity, and let's say you've been playing Play-Doh for 10 minutes and you're cool, and then all of a sudden you're just like, oh my God, I can't make another freaking snake out of Play-Doh. I'm just, you find your mind wandering, right? You are getting disconnected and it almost erases the connection activity with your child, right? And so that's usually what happens and why your kid gets into connection scarcity is because you just sort of erased the first 10 minutes. So what I find is the key to connection activities is that you have to recognize when you've stopped being present. And it's okay. You get to be bored playing Play-Doh. You get to be bored playing with your two-year-old. You get to be bored playing with your four-year-old. You guys, I think that's another thing that gets so sort of bastardized in our current parenting is that that you're supposed to love and cherish every moment with your kids. Dude, they don't have a lot of language right now. You can 100% love your kid, be engaged with your kid and get bored by your kid. It's okay. You just have to be honest with yourself and say, holy shit, I'm checking out. I don't want to erase this activity. So this is a great place for you to say, you know what, sweetie, you finish some Play-Doh. I need to go attend to some work in the house. I will be back in 10 minutes. Okay. And you guys, here's a, here's a trick. Here's a lie. <laughs> you can call scrolling on your phone, your work. 
because it is your work. If you feel like you need a second to check in on social media, to text a, a friend back, you get to do that. And that is your mom work. So you can say, all right, sweetie, I just need to do a little bit of work for 10 minutes. I'm going to set the timer so I remember to come back right? And this is how you fill their gas tanks quick, quickly, right? You get to extricate yourself and you come back so that they don't have that connection scarcity. And if you can continually do this and find moments that you can do this, you will start to eradicate that connection scarcity. The other thing is, you know, you play with Play-Doh for 10 minutes, you extricate yourself for 10 minutes, you come back, you are building independent play, Again, we, I'm going to talk about this forever and ever. We want your child as independent as possible, as soon as possible, right? For not, not only for their own growth, but so you catch a break. So you get to do your stuff too. One of the things is, you know, if you find that you are home with your child all day long, or, you know, even if you work, but you never have enough time, but you you feel like you're with your kid all the time, that's where we get mucked up, right? Because you shouldn't have to spend all your time with your child. You really shouldn't. They should be able to start getting out of playing with you and playing by yourself. Of course, two and three, that's not going to happen right away. And so you want to build these little moments, these time chunks. Yeah. And again, it can be, your connection can be, it, it can be anything. It can be any activity and it can be as long as you feel like you're still present with your child. Coloring, coloring is a great one because you can talk, but you can be silent, right? And so, like I said, this is a practice and you might have to set your time. You're like, anybody, it's like meditation, right? If you're not used to meditating, you, you have to set a timer. And most people, most beginner meditating people will set their timer for like five minutes and they'll be like, oh my God, this is the most painful five minutes of my life. <laughs> so you may have to do that if you're not used to this, like being fully present. And if you feel the itch, like, oh, I need, I, I really just, I need to go do dishes. I need to do laundry. I need to, I need to not be sitting here playing Play-Doh right now. Be honest with your child, right? Because the, the eight minutes that you were present will count. What won't count is if you start to zone out and phone it in. Reading, reading can be a, an awesome connecting activity, but we all know that you can phone it in too, right? So if nighttime reading, very often bedtime reading can be a phone it in. You're exhausted, your spouse is exhausted, everybody's exhausted, right? So we tend to phone it in and just read the book. That's cool. Just make sure that you get some reading connecting during the day, right? And, and, a lot of times I know that if mom is a stay at home, the stay at home parent, dad works. A lot of times dad will take the bedtime reading because he's not so exhausted. Right. And so he will do the like the voices and the super engagement and the child feels that. So just be aware of like when you're phoning it in and when you're not. And again, anything can be a connecting activity. Just simply sitting and talking to your child. Right. A lot of times we forget to have honest conversation because they're so silly and they, they don't have some great conversation right now. They will, they will. But a great thing, a great connecting activity is called my favorite, my favorite and it's chit chat, right? And, and so you can go back and forth. What's your favorite color? Kids love any superlative. What's your favorite? What do you hate? You know, and those kinds of what's the best, what's the worst. So those are some really great connecting activities. But let's talk about the phone and how to manage the phone with these connection activities. I don't know if you've discovered the joy of airplane mode. I, I was fairly new to this party and it's a, it's a game changer. So make sure that when you're going to go to connect with your child, put your phone on airplane mode at least some or most of the day, actually. When I work with families, I actually, we do a whole package and families are allowed to text me. And so I have to manage that because, you know, I can't be texting all day. That's, it's part of my job and, and I love it. I love being connected with my clients. But what ends up happening is, you know, I work with people all over different, different coasts and uh, different countries actually. And so I have to be really sort of brutal about my phone boundaries. So I put my phone on airplane mode for most of the day. And, and then on the hour, every hour, I check it. 
and I check and I answer all the texts in one fell swoop. I, I'll go and answer email once a day. I don't continually check my email unless I'm really looking for something. And uh, I personally use an app called Freedom.2, and this allows you to shut down certain websites. So I use that to manage my social media use. Guys, my weakness is scrolling Facebook. That's my default. I will go and I'll, I'll scroll Facebook just like anybody else. And so I have to be really cautious of that. The great thing is that my son is older now and, and we've taught, uh, I taught him this language, disconnected and connected. And you can do this too. Start teaching your child the language. Like, hey, baby, I feel very disconnected from you. Come on, let's sit and have some snuggle time or let's sit and, and read a book so I can feel connected to you. When we start using the language... Yeah, then your child learns it and can start to navigate the emotional landscape. And so, you know, that's my son's again, almost 13. And he'll he'll feel that and he'll be like, you need to you need to shut off your phone. And maybe you've experienced your child swatting your phone out of your hand. It's just it's a real thing. And I think it it can be managed. And I don't think we have to be catastrophic about it and think like, you know, oh, it's phone is ruining our lives. Social media is ruining our lives. It's not. It just, it needs to be managed in a new way. And it's okay if we use these other tools, like a tool. It's okay if you don't have self-control over it, but figure out how to get that. And again, that, that app is called Freedom.2. I'm not an affiliate or anything like that. I just, I love it because it helps me manage. I can shut down Facebook for two hours at a time or Instagram or whatever. I can shut everything down. And that is very, very helpful. So you might want to do something like that, like airplane mode, and then tell your child, like, honey, I have to go, I have to go do a little work on my phone. I'll be back. Or you don't even have to mention your phone, but make sure you tell your child, I'm done. I'm going to go do this and I'll be back. And so that's super helpful. It's also really helpful to know that you're, when your child knows that you're going into something, not really disconnected. So I, I've said watching a movie can be wildly connecting, but oftentimes what a lot of parents do is they say they'll watch a movie and then they'll scroll their phone or they'll bebop around the house. So just check yourself and be really clear. And most kids are very understanding as long as we're clear. If your kid thinks you're going to sit and watch Moana together, they're going to be pissed that you get up and, and go check your phone, Right. But if you, if you say, sweetie, I'm going to let you watch Moana because I need to do some work. So I can't really sit with you, but I'll, I'll kind of pop in every now and then. Most kids, most kids get that. It's when there's an, the expectation is different and it's not being met. So, so keep that in mind. Yeah. Listen, connection, it gets you good behavior almost all the time. Again, it goes back to that African proverb, right? If they, if a child doesn't feel your warmth, doesn't feel that connection, they'll burn down the village to get it. It, it, a funny thing in my own life, I, I homeschool and I don't think everybody should homeschool. I'm not one of those people, but I, and within the homeschooling community, people would talk about, you know, my kid fights me. My kid resists me. My kid is such a pain in the ass. I can't, I'm going to send him to school. I can't get any work done with, with my kid. And it's, it's a real thing in the homeschool community. And it cracks me up because people always ask me like, how do you do it? And I say, well, Connection comes before academics. I like Pascal and I have to be connected because then he'll sit and do anything I ask him to because we're, we're connected. I get this like crazy willing behavior from him no matter what, even though he's almost a teenager because we're connected. It is the basis of our relationship. And so I can't really underestimate again. This is the basis of, of parenting. And, and again, if I had to boil down my work to one word, it would be this. It's going to, it's just going to get you better behavior. And I want to leave you with, again, the idea that please use this language with your child. I feel like sometimes when we're talking about all this emotional stuff underneath parenting, that parents try to pull one over on the kids. Like I'm going to be connected, but they're not going to know I'm connecting and they're not going to know I'm disconnected. Use these words Sweetie, I feel so connected to you now. I love it. I love this feeling. Do you feel it? Or, you know, oh my goodness, your behavior is kind of wonky today. I feel like you need connection. Are we disconnected? Let's connect. What can we do to connect? And even if my in my potty training work, I've had this, um, when we talk about regressions, when the first child has potty trained and the second child comes along, right? And you have a new family member, a new sibling. I talk about this term baby love. You'll often find the older child 
wants to regress and wants to be like the baby because shit, the baby's getting everything. The baby gets so much focus and attention and love and snuggles. And so the older child wants to do that. And so I have this term baby love where the, the older child can ask for baby love, can ask for those snuggles. And you you lean into it. You give him all the snuggles in the world. And I can guarantee your three or four or five-year-old is going to want to bound back and be a big kid. It, it takes like 30 seconds. But when you lean into it, instead of like, no, 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 you're a big boy. You don't, you don't need what the baby needs. That's when you get the shitty behavior. When you lean into it, that connection, your child now feels connected to you in that love and snuggle kind of way. So you could call it connection, disconnection. You can call it baby love. You can call it mama love. Um, that's what my son calls it, mama love. He, I, And even now, I can tell he's drained because he'll be like, dude, he's, he's almost my height. And he'll be like, oh, mommy, I need some mama love, right? And so that's how we reconnect. So again, it helps them navigate the emotional landscape. We're never trying to pull emotional strings behind your child's back. When we say these things, when we give them the language, then as soon as they get that language, they'll be able to communicate that to you. And what's better than that? What's better than your kid coming to you and saying, yeah, I'm acting shitty because I feel disconnected. Can we please connect? Bam. (laughs) Right. (laughs) All right. I'm going to sign off for today. You can always go to jamieglowacki.com for the super cool latest updates, including the launch of my new book, yummy new book presale treats, when we release new episodes, and how to work with me directly. And of course, if you need any potty training help, there's a handy link there that will take you to all my potty training resources, including all my courses. That's the Oh Crap Potty Training online course, my pooping solutions course, and my night training supplement. And if you need additional help, how to book with a certified OCRAP consultant. That's all at jamieglowacki.com. Have a beautiful day and rock on.